<laughs> Soon, I hope. Mr. Jeffrey Mackey, Montreal poet. Thank you. So the first poem I'd like to start with is called Denny's of Iniquity. <laughs> Everyone has their own Denny's of Iniquity. Mine is at Davies in Thurlow, where I meet friends, girlfriends, and ex-girlfriends. For breakfast, I am always ordering the same thing. A super slam, three eggs, three pancakes, three bacon, three sausage. Coffee is always extra. Coffee is always extra. In the hours before the workday, we attempt to get caught up, figure out what went wrong, and talk about our jobs. The Denny's on Davy has impressionist prints, but the menu, I am sure, is the same as any other Denny's, with promises that they have served friends, travelers, etc. for years. Which I guess is different from what I've done. I am tired after five hours sleep, getting home at 3 a.m. This is uh, my attempt at a country song. It's called eBay. My wife has put me on eBay, and now she's just waiting for the bids and leaving with the kids. My wife has put me on eBay. I tried to uh, persuade the missus with some sweet loving kisses. I tried to insist, but I only got eBay, not even Craigslist. I'm stuck here with old books, furniture and hooks, toys and clothes galore. Wanted my wife to act for more, but I'm only two bucks on eBay. Okay. <laughs> I'll throw in the poem. This is called Musicals. It's uh, for a friend of mine who had uh, depression. Everyone has the disease of anxiety. It can become a badge of honor, the one everyone talks about, the one that gets you on the news to talk about. Everyone has a theory, the one that gives you the white noise of fear. And fear's noise is so loud that sometimes you can't hear love's footsteps coming in. And Bruce Coburn sang the dark red edge of dawn, but all I can see is gray mist out this window. November fog, it goes with a thick coffee. And I remember you said on the loneliest of mornings, on the darkest of nights, it was musicals that kept you alive. Now I have never liked musicals much, but if it is your medicine and show tunes, it is. And I will learn Oklahoma, Showboat, My Fair Lady, Greece, Jesus Christ Superstar. I will sing them all to keep you alive. She said, I'm not here to make you happy, I'm not here to make you suffer, I'm not here, I'm not here to make you realize that when a hand slaps the table, it is a signal, one that you will have to learn the meaning of. And you will have to learn when this door closes that I will no longer be here, and it won't be magic, it will be real. And you can open it with a shout of abracadabra, you can shout and open it with a prayer, or a simple turn of the knob, but I won't be behind it. And you may be angry, or you may have a sense of victory. You may return to this table and light a candle, open a bottle, toast your freedom, and continue toasting your freedom until the day you miss me, but I won't be here. Because I fear if I come back, I may find you at this table, trying the door with every footfall you hear, and I won't return by magic or incantation or superstitious hope. And you can light a votive candle, Candle, play our favorite song a thousand times, but you must also learn that you are not dead, but we are. So I'll play, uh, play. <laughs> uh, this uh, one was written, uh, it's going to be actually in a history uh, project for uh, Jerry Park. It's actually a poem I wrote when uh, Gary Carter passed away last year. And, uh, and then I have one more, and then a, a, a little longer poem to finish up with, and we're going to do something. This is called Back in Those Days, and it's a poem for Gary Carter. Back in those days, years seemed to last forever. Back in those days, we did not measure time. Back in those days, there were no years, only seasons of hockey, baseball, and soccer. And as far as we saw, there was no last year for a player, but only last season for stats. And back in those days, we chose our teams by their symbol, or the first game we attended, or perhaps the team our dads liked. A favorite team can be a family inheritance. Back in those days, your grandparents were lucky to be in Florida for spring training, a curious thing called the Grapefruit League. 
Back in those days, there was no Googling stats. We collected cards for all we needed to know, and then we tried to take those cards by playing topsies and throwing them against the wall. It had its rules. And back in those days, I had hat head because I only took off my Expos cap for the school picture. And back in those days, you felt anxious if you didn't get your favorite player's number when the sweaters were handed out. And back in those days, we didn't know that some people hated the big O. And back in those days, you played for hours with a tennis ball and a souvenir bat. Back in those days, garage doors were the universal boards or backstop. And back in those days, you learned how to imitate the cheer of a crowd with your voice. Back in those days, we wanted it to last forever, and sometimes we still do. This one's called Reunion. It was uh, written when a bunch of old punk bands from uh, Ottawa got back together, and I saw the announcement on Facebook, but I was, on the last, I wasn't able to get back down there. <clears throat> it's called Reunion. The old punk bands got back together at a reunion gig in Ottawa. And I couldn't make it down. Now I saw those pictures and it made me instantly sad, alone in my distance, alone at night on my 42nd birthday in my Montreal apartment. And I was getting sentimental about people I hadn't seen in 15 years. Some people had gone gray, me, I'm no longer the coiffed mod. I'm balding and a little bit heavier but still alive. And I remember we were going to change the world and have we? I don't know, the world is a big place. And I got so moved that I had to take a walk in my new world of Montreal, my recent world, to calm down, to sleep. You know, I had to work in the morning. Why was I so emotional? What this need to belong? I mean, I belong here, have friends, responsibilities, and it's bigger in many ways. But we knew each other when we were going to take on the world, take it apart, take our place. And we have in our way, we have our places. I still work. But we knew each other when we couldn't wait to get out of Ottawa, out of suburbia, but hell, I bet some have returned or want to, and nothing changes and everything changes, and we are spread across the country, the world, and the technology of the 21st century brought our 20th centuries together for a short period. I'll finish with this piece. <clears throat> 